everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Just adjusting things. Let me go, go up a little bit higher. So you can um, say where you're tuning in from if you want to. It's always nice to see where people are painting from. And um, we're painting some rainy day bits of just abstract art. It's going to be fun and uh, you can make it your own. You can change things up. It's abstract, so it's easy to work with. Um, also to let go a little bit and not be too focused on exact details. And hopefully everyone had a good holiday. So I have my, I like to reuse my palette sometimes and I have my white. I also have a mixing palette over here for me to, it's dry. Uh, so white, <clears throat> black, phthalo blue. I really like phthalo blue because it's bright and you can do anything with it or primary blue, pretty much the same. And bright red, but this is not the orange red for this painting. If you get an orange red, you're gonna get much more deeper browns than what I have. And bright yellow or primary yellow or lemon yellow. And you can pause, take your time through this video. You can watch it later, you can watch it afterwards. And then I have my brushes here as examples of what I like to use for this painting. Oh, hey, Deborah, welcome. Welcome back. So this is my large. You can use any large. This is a almost like a mop brush. It's not quite there, but you can see it's round. It's pretty big. And I like to use that for a lot of my background work because it gets a lot of it done pretty fast. This is just a round kind of medium brush, about a size, it says size 12, but I don't believe it. It's probably more closer to an eight or 10. And oop, <clears throat> detailed brush for, you know, the tiny little lines for the raindrops and the little water bits. And a flat brush, if you're feeling like a, if you like the flat brush, it's about a size number four or half inch. Um, that can be used for in the middle area here in that like cloudy bit right up top. Hmm, nice, so a lot of people painting with me again from a lot of places, different countries, it's great. And I am live from Canada, Ontario. So we'll get started very shortly. I'll just leave this here for now and get yourselves comfortable with a water cup, paper towel, maybe something to drink or snack on. And cause I like to start right at 7 PM here um, in two minutes, just so that if anybody wants to join live, they are able to do so. And this is my 12 by 16 canvas. You can use any size that you want to as well. All you have to do is scale it. So um, just go by my measurements, I guess. Yeah, and we do lots of free videos. We have lots up already. You can subscribe and um, it does help support us in a small way. And um, you can see all the free videos that we have hosted. We don't take them down. So that's why you can pause and you can watch this later on. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over so I can start painting very shortly. And actually I'm gonna show you how to, I'm gonna use this to mix my first color. It's going to be more of that bottom part down here. So you can see it looks like an abstract road and that's what we wanna create. And my secret for that, the easiest way to do that is to start with your largest brush. I start with my largest brush and then I start switching to smaller and smaller brushes as I move on. And um, oh, Lisa, thanks. I'm glad that you took advantage of our 40% off sale on our website. Um, 
Okay, so this is my large brush here. Dip it in your water and dry it off really well. So this is a lot of kind of dry brushing technique. I don't use a lot of my wet, I don't, I don't like to keep the brush too wet because then you can see a lot of lines. You can see a lot of streaky lines and then um, it kind of takes away from the look of the whole painting. So that's just me. So this is a bit more dry, even though I dipped it in the water. So starting with this, I am starting with just a dip of white here. Pull that to the side. And then you have to be very careful. You can start. So you know what? Just to be safe, let's just start with this white. And you can see right in the middle in about three fourths of the way up, maybe two thirds actually, is where this sort of horizon line is sitting for where the end of the road is seen. So that's where I want to go. I want to go like this, go across. Okay, so this is about where I want it to be, right in the middle, and just bring it down and just don't really focus too much on how wide you went. If you painted the whole thing white, doesn't matter. So white, start in the middle, and then just, you can see I'm just dragging it out, nice long strokes, like I'm making a wide road. You can't really see it, um, but thinner up top, and then just drag it out here, thin up top here, and then drag it out to the side here. Just kind of mostly fill it in. So I mostly filled that in. I didn't wash this off. I don't really need to because from here, we're going to work a little bit faster. We want to get this nice light center. You can see it's not perfectly white and then to a more grayish, darker blue towards the side. And then we will work our way up. So from this white that we had pulled to the side, just add a little bit more. And then we're going to take a tiny little dip of blue just to start because you can see it turns pretty light blue pretty fast. I'm going to take actually one more dip just now that I can see what it looks like. It's more of a sky blue at this point. Yeah, little dips of blue getting darker because we already have white here. And then a tiny little touch of black. Don't start with too much because we're going to be adding more and I kind of want to keep it more on the blue side. So it's only slightly getting a bit more grayish, but it's, you can see it's very blue. It's like the tiniest dot of black. If it goes too gray, just start over, wash off your brush. It's okay. And then I'm still using the large brush. I'm just going to start from the top here, go to the side, right? I'm just going to go right outside of this white, just get off a lot of this paint. And I'm, I like to think abstract here, just kind of rub it in and just do short little strokes and start dragging it in a bit to the middle. Use a lot of your paint. If you have to, you can dab it on your napkin just to get the extra paint off. And so, you know, I'm doing kind of like lightly just dabbing and getting it into the middle here, just very lightly. just to get a little essence of this color so it's not perfectly white anymore. Very abstract and still lighter and darker towards the outside. And that's what I'm just doing right outside that white and dragging it in. If you go up really high, that's okay because it's gonna be covered with darker colors anyway. And sometimes I just, if you find it's too perfect looking, mess it up a little bit. Just bring a little bit more in from one side than the other so it's not too perfect. Like make it kind of look like it's turning. You can see maybe you wanna turn it a little bit not perfectly straight so it has a bit of a bend. So you can put more in on this side and a little bit less on that side. Okay, so someone's asking how I made this blue. So this blue, 
right here. You can see it's close to a cerulean. So if you have cerulean, you can use that. Um, it's a scoop of white and a couple little dips of blue until you have a bit of a sky blue with a tiny touch of black. If you added black or not, it doesn't matter. It's still going to make a similar effect anyways. And it's going to get a bit more gray on the side. So uh, it, it's about this shade of blue with a tiny touch of black, but you can't really tell. And just so you guys know, if you are up to speed with me, I still haven't washed this off because I don't want to wet this brush too much for this painting. There are some times where I do wash it off, but I'm not going to just yet. And if you do, just try to dry it off really well, especially a large brush that holds a lot of water and it starts making a lot of streaks. You can already see some of my streaks here, but I'm just letting it be. We're just going to let that be. And if you need to touch it up, we're going to touch it up. Okay, so hopefully we have that done. You can give me a thumbs up if you are with me and I'm going to start mixing my next color because I don't want paint drying on this brush. We're going to work our way up on this horizon line till we're about here. So that's getting into this, around this color. And we're going to actually, you know what? Let's just keep using this color a bit for the sky while we have it. Take a bit more. I'm just picking up some paint and I think I'll add a bit more white to it because I don't want to go too dark. Just add a little bit more white so it's a bit lighter, something like this. Yeah, that's what I'm going to use. So you can see in the sky overall pretty light. There's a kind of some stuff happening in the middle there, right? Some fun circles. But um, behind all of that, we have a little bit of this blue gray essence of color, this bluish color. I went a little bit lighter. It's always a bit kind of safe to go a bit lighter here. And I'm just doing the dry brush thing. I haven't put water into it. I'm just adding in a bit of color into the top. So I'm just doing some, I'm just rubbing it in, doing some circular motions. And it's almost like you're thinking a bit cloud-like. So you're almost trying to make it softer, not too, um, not too much of a straight line, just a little bit more on the softer roundish side. So there's a little small gap right around here. And I'm just filling in a lot of this area right here, a little bit towards the top, just a couple little dabs up here. There's still some white left. That's okay. I'm just going to leave it like that. And just remember, you can pause the paint or pause this video to catch up however you need to. And I dipped my brush in my water kind of accidentally, but that's okay. It's just a habit. I'm going to dry this off really well now. So I'm just getting uh, this water, the extra water, just by squeezing it out. Because again, I don't want it too watery. And I'm still leaving this middle section alone for a bit. We don't want to keep going over, over spots and um, this is a bit wet. It can start pulling off paint and not really doing what you want, maybe spreading more blue around. And I do like to touch it up afterwards, after I do some of the sections here with a bit more of a, some white and maybe some lighter blue if you need to put it back in. So now I'm going to start mixing. Um, into this color, actually, you can start mixing a bit more of a 
deeper reddish purple looking color. So that means taking red, I'm just going to place it right on top. Just a nice scoop of red. Take a nice scoop of red, then take a tiny little touch of black. Just see where that takes you. You want to start off a little bit smaller here, tiny touch of black. You'll notice that it actually turns a bit purpley looking which is nice. I'm gonna add another dot of black, get it a bit darker because you can see it's a bit brown. It's kind of dark brown, nice and dark. And then a little dip of yellow. This makes it a bit more brown. Not too much yellow, just more on the red side. So red, you can bring it back to a more reddish, darker red color. And let's see how that looks on our canvas. So uh, just to have a reference going across here, this is more of our horizon, right? And then we have the, you can see more of like an actual deeper red, kind of looks like a red wine color. Down below it, more of a shadow. So I'm gonna dab. Test it out. Make sure you like the color. It kind of works for you. If it's still too bright, just add another touch of black. That's easy to do. Um, you just really can't take a lot of the black away. So you want to be a bit more careful. So I'm just going to dab and start dragging this down. You can see it's going across here and then it just drags down. You have this nice angle coming down with not too much paint on your brush. And if you do use up a lot of it, into this section into the middle before you start trying to blend it out into your blue. So I lightly tap, just tap, tap. Something like this. And I will leave it like that for now before I blend it out. Just making sure I get sides, mostly filling it in. And I kept the brush. I haven't washed it off. I'm just making sure there's not too much paint left on here. We're just kind of pulling off a little bit of this paint on a napkin. So sometimes these colors, you just have to build off of other colors to get certain colors. And um, now I can take a bit more blue, a bit of white. And this is just with the same brush I haven't washed off. It automatically just makes a more grayish looking blue because there's already black on the brush from that brown we just made. If you have too much paint on the brush, you're finding that it turns a different color. Wipe off a lot of the paint or wash off your brush and just make your blue with some white and add in a little bit of this color to give it a bit more of a grayish tone. And then now you can get in between these two colors. You can just, it looks like you have a blend now. And I'm just doing the short little strokes, kind of dabbing. I'm not doing long strokes and I'm not using water. Gives it more of a shadowed look. In between the colors overlapping some of that brown and some of that lighter blue. And I will go to the other side, grab a little bit more, and pretty much do the same thing. So a bit less on this side is what I did. Okay. 
And now I'm just washing this off. So wash that off and squeeze out the water. And while this is still just a little bit kind of damp because we've been dry brushing it, it dries pretty fast with a more clean brush and not too watery. Now you can touch up on some of that lighter blue or white in the center. I like to do that light blue color. So just some white, touch of blue, mostly white. You have just a slight hint of this light blue. And then just go over the sides here. I'm just giving it a little bit more of a blend. And the same on this side as well. And you can see I like streaking some of this into the middle so it's not perfectly white. But if you need to add a little bit more white into the middle, you totally can. Because sometimes it gets really blue up here. You can switch to a smaller brush. You could just lightly tap it in the middle and it keeps it looking more narrow up there. And then it gets, you can see it gets a little bit wider as you get down to the bottom. I think I'll put a little bit more on this side because it looks like I had a bit more of a bend going that way, but you can change it up. Maybe I'll just have it going the opposite way. I can have more of a bend going this way. Why not? Take advantage of what you already have and what you think you see. It's always nice. You can see I like to rub the brush in and gets rid of some of those streaky brush strokes. But if you're finding you're pulling off paint, you have to take um, a break for it to dry if you want to touch up. I would say just leave it. And then I'm putting down this brush for a while. I'm actually going to start just switching to one of these two brushes, which is the more medium, you can use a flat or a round. I find the flat is pretty good. I like the flat brush. We're going to use it for the deep red wine color, which is actually just red and black. And we're going to put that, it looks like hills. It looks like there's some stuff happening. So how are we doing? And if you're ready for the next step, let me know. We'll start on this part here. I would say you have a lot of the hard part done for the entire painting. Getting this all to your liking is just, it's just you're jumping into abstract. And after that, doing all this stuff seems a lot easier to do. So this again is, I'm using this brush for my next one. 
I was using my large. This is about a number four flat. And it's about a half inch too if you're going by that measurement. So I'm going to take a scoop of red. And you can even just mix on top of a previous that previous brown. That's fine too. You can build off of colors there. You can get used to building off of colors and using what you have to make you know, different types of colors, not just black and red. You can have a little touch of brown. You can see it's already getting really dark, but it's just red and black. And you can see on your palette just how red it is. So it looks really dark, but when I start putting this, it doesn't look as dark as you thought. If it's still too dark, just take another little scoop of red on my brush. I have red, and then you can see it just turns a little bit more red looking. So that is what I like to use. Although if you need a little bit more assistance, if you're finding that it's not turning too purpley and you want it to be a bit more purpley, just add in the tiniest little smidge of blue. Blue is very overpowering. So I have, see that little dot of blue on the end of my brush? Add that in. It does turn a bit more purple without turning too purple. Too much blue turns super blue, you can see. It helps assist with the purple look while still looking red. And I'm just kind of dabbing with the tip of my brush here. It's a little bit smaller here. Just kind of light little taps towards the middle because I want to make it look like there's some stuff in the distance. And just flick it off to the side. Try to think very abstract looking hills. Still dry brushing but I'm using a bit more paint on my brush. So I'm gonna get a little bit more paint mixed together as I keep going. And it's still a bit dark. I think I'll add a bit more red in here. Maybe make it a bit higher, sometimes a bit lower and just go with it. And you don't have to fill it up to your blue if you don't. If you have a little bit more of a gap, that's fine. We still have uh, actually a bit of purple I put above this. And then lightly tap it into this brown because you want it to blend and it will blend easily because brown is essentially got all these colors already in it. Just make sure you have a good coating, not too, not too transparent, right? So you want to have a little bit more of an opaque look. So if that means you have to do a second coat later on, just be patient, do a second coat, it turns a bit darker. And also it's not as streaky looking if you're finding it's too streaky for your liking. Getting that in, getting this to the height that I'm Kind of happy with, maybe a little bit higher here. Yep. Yeah. All right. And someone's asking what colors I have mixed. I'm actually using the basic primaries and I just mix as I go. And this is a perfect opportunity to do a second coat on your dark brown. If you're finding it's too transparent, right? So you think it's too light. Maybe you see some more of the white background. Just take your brown again. So my brown previously before, a little bit of yellow, red, and black, essentially. So yellow, red, and black, a bit more on the red side, if you're keeping with more of that red theme. And now you can see it gets a little bit more opaque and darker. Keep it very little at the top. See how I'm just lightly tapping at the top, light little streaks, and then fill more into the bottom, get a bit wider, more brown towards the bottom here. And with very little paint left, now you can just lightly streak some into your blue. So it blends into that. You don't just have a brown line cutting across. Just adding a little bit more black. Okay, 
Now I'm going to do the other side just to touch up. Black, red, and a bit of yellow. Gives it more of a brownish tone. I'll add a touch more black. Like little taps towards the back. And I'm going to wipe off some of the paint because you can tell there's a lot of paint there. So I'm going to wipe some of it off. And then lightly streak it into some of the blue. It gives it a bit of a blend. really hard to stop playing around with it. But when you feel like you have done enough, uh, let that dry, I'm washing it off. And I'm going to focus more onto the top part, which is making that darker cloud. And there is a little bit in this one above that red bit of whatever, you know, the mountains or some background noise of um, some forest buildings. I like to think of it more as mountains. Okay, so I'm washing this off really well. And again, not too much water on the brush. I'm just dabbing it pretty dry. If you happen to have a little bit of paint on your brush, touching other colors, I would say just let it go. Um, in this painting, so it's so abstract, sometimes you come across a color that you really like and you should just leave it. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. It's just a guideline. So that hint of purple that's going across here, it can clean up some of this red, first of all, if you're finding that's just a bit too much. Um, and making this purple is taking a bit of red here and a small little touch of blue. Like I said, it was so powerful. As soon as I mix it, you can see it turns purple right away, especially when I add in a little bit of white. So a scoop of white, more like it. And it turns pretty basic purple. If you're finding, okay, in comparison to the colors in your painting, it's just too bright, add a touch of black if you want to give it some more gray tone. It calms and mutes your color or add a touch of brown. So your other brown that you had mixed before, if you add a touch of it, it mutes your purple down and it doesn't make it too, too bright and vibrant for the painting because it's a rainy day. It's not supposed to be ultra vibrant right now. Looks a bit more cloudy. So something like this and add more white if you're finding it's just too dark. If you want on the brighter side, you can get it a bit brighter. Okay, so let's start with something a bit brighter and I can always go darker. This already actually looks like the color that I want. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm just kind of dabbing around. You can actually switch up the way that this looks if you wanna bring some of it in here. Lightly tap around just to get all of that filled in. And I'm doing a bit of a circular motion. A good trick is to use your finger to really blend this out and make it look a bit more faded. Wiping off a little bit more of the paint, especially if it's coming off a bit too strong. Just a little bit at the top. Using my finger to help blend it out a little bit more. And now you have a little bit of purple going above here. It's going to help build onto the abstract look in the background of all those bright colors that you can't, if it's out of focus, you can't really see. And while that is still wet, okay, so while this is still wet, now I can take a bit more of my darker purple, so more red and a touch more blue, 
right on top. It gets it only gets darker, so you don't add any more white. Right, and a touch more blue. Oop, that's, see, that's too much blue. That's okay. A little bit of that. Wipe off some of your paint so it's not too heavily coated. And then just in little bits, add this in. Just break up all of that same purple. I don't want it all the same going across. A couple little dabs here. Just kind of circle it in, dab it in. That's what I did. Something like this. And, okay, I'll leave that alone. So save that dark purple we were just using. If you need to, mix a little bit more. This is a good opportunity to start working on that cloud, that bit of cloud happening up here. We're going to get that in with something you can see. It's got some dark brown right underneath it. So if you have that dark brown still, perfect, or you can mix it again. And then we can, after we're doing the cloud, then we can get a little bit more color in between. You can get this almost like a teal color. You can put in some minty green. Let me know that you're ready to move on. Who is keeping up? Who's a fast painter? Maybe you're just watching and painting later. Okay, nice to see some people are caught up. Awesome. Welcome in, Joanna. Nice to see you again. Um, okay, yep, so some people are just painting later. All good. Okay, so this cloudy part, I'm, again, I'm gonna put this in and then I'm putting this gray, light gray blue barrier just underneath it. Gives it a nice a bit more fluffiness and it takes away from all of that heaviness at the bottom too. So it doesn't look like there's a random sore, sore like it's just sticking out like a sore thumb kind of cloud. Um, let's just keep using the same brush unless you're happy with your round brush, whatever one works. So the first thing I start with is purple. I like to start with the purple and then put the brown into the purple because you can see it's got a little bit more layering over top with the brown. Take that same purple or, you know, something if you want to mix it new. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. That's the beauty of painting. No one's going to know and it's kind of nice to do whatever you mix together and whip together. Darker purple, no more white. I'm mixing in the same purple spot because it's just making it better, really. And I don't have to add more white. All right, so I've kind of, this at this point, I'm taking a little tiny touch of water here because I don't want, you'll see, I don't want it to be too much of a dry brush. Um, so right around here, you can see just off to the side, I'm kind of using more of the flat side and the thin side. I'm just doing a bit more diagonal streaks. You can pick one way, you can do the other way. Um, just changing the direction here from all this linear work that we've done down here. So I'm just going off to the side. And then 
a little bit, just lightly tapping along the side. You can see it mostly gets from one end to the other. You can change it up a little bit. So on this end, you can lightly tap so it doesn't just look like you put a line going across. Lightly tapping. You can lightly tap on some of the top parts of this purpley cloud. And then I think I'm going to stop after I go a little bit further down. So I have about an inch of this. Yeah, leave it like that. Now I'm going to use brown. So right away, I want to use brown. I'm just going to, and the easiest way to make brown on the fly, taking some of this yellow here, black into your purple with some yellow. Not too much yellow. You'll find that it actually turns a little bit too yellow, <laughs> but black and some yellow, it will turn very brown and you can counterbalance if you took too much yellow with more red, right? Cause you're just make, you're just mixing it together, but this gets it there faster if you don't mind mixing over other colors. And that's how I like to paint. Add more red if you want more on the red side, like down here. So I'm wiping off a lot of this paint again, back to more of a dry brush technique. And it comes off a bit softer, it's easier to work with blend into your purple. You can see all that darkness is collecting at the bottom. You can make it a little bit wider or you can go right over top of your purple and not extend it because if you keep going down, you, you lose this middle part. So I'm going to go more into my purple and not really extend it too much towards the bottom. And I'm just doing some light little taps with the side of my brush, some circular motions, give it some softer look at the bottom. A little bit less on this side. Something like that. And um, as I wait, I like to touch up on this red part here. Maybe you lost a lot of it. You want to just bring it back. All good. Red and a touch of black. You can add in a little bit of white if you want it to be a bit more brighter overall and you want it to stand out a little bit more. It's almost like basically touching right in the middle, just a little, hardly, just a little bit. There, so now it's a little bit deeper, has that second coat on that red. It looks a bit more opaque and it's more solid. And so far the middle, it's a bit of a mess, but that's that's kind of what we wanted. We have that light gray blue I was talking about earlier to clean it up right in the middle, give it that soft fluffy look in uh, the bottom and going into the purple to clean up that purple as well, which is this purple here. So it's just cleaning up all of all of this section. And I still have, if I tilt it a bit more, sometimes it's so bright. Uh, at the top here, I still have a little bit of that light blue from down here, little bits at the top. So after I washed off this brush, I dabbed it dry. Now we can make this grayish blue. You can see it's still a bit more on the blue side, pretty light overall. Let's mix it again. Pull your white to the side. Take some blue here. You'll notice that you just want a little bit of a lighter blue. You don't want um, dark blue like over here. You want it to be overall lighter, softer, and a tiny little touch of black. See that tiny little dot of black? You can see just how gray it turns putting that in there, but also still looking blue. Perfect. 
And um, I'm going to start right below. Just use up a lot of your paint down here. This is where I like to use up a lot of the paint. If you're finding that you need to get rid of some of the color, but also you can dab off the extra paint so you can go back to more of a dry, lighter touch. And I'm just I'm kind of just doing circular motions again. Also going into this brown a little bit so it's more uneven. And softening up a bit of the side and into the purple to give it a, just like a small little touch down here. It's not too much purple, it's not overwhelming, but there's a hint of it. And it's okay if you pick up some of your brown, unless it's too much brown, just stop. Wait a bit for it to dry a little bit onto the side, maybe just soften up the edge a bit. And it looks like the cloud's more into the center. We can go a little bit lower down in some parts than others. There, now the purple is a bit more blended out. And don't worry if you overpowered some of this brown, you can always go back to it. You can always add in a little bit more brown on your brush without even washing off the brush still. You can still put in some more. So for example, maybe put in a little bit more at the bottom. I'm trying to decide if I, if I really want to. I think I'll touch it up just to show you how you can do that. So a little bit less, not too much on your brush, wiping it off and then touch up on the brown. Or even the purple. Sometimes you go right over the purple with the brown and you've lost your purple. Now you have this nice cloudy look. Add in a hint more red, not too much red. I mean, just a hint more. I took a little touch of red. If you wanna keep it more of that red theme that we have going on with the, the red on the side here, you can add to your brown a touch more red to give it that darker reddish brown color. And it goes pretty well with the purple because it's purple is mostly red. So I'm leaving this cloud alone for now. I need it to dry, especially if you wanna to touch up on the purple. Usually if it's got wet brown on it, the purple doesn't turn as vibrant as you want it to. And then you're a little bit frustrated about it. So just washing this off, drying it off pretty well. And even the blue, if you found that you're just spreading some brown around, let it dry, put the blue back in do it with you so you can see that it works um, but in the meantime what you can do is if you have too much emptiness up here maybe you need to add in a little bit more blue at the top that's easy to do take some of your white and blue again you can add in a touch of black if you like the blue gray tones not too dark mostly white so something more along the lines of like light blue right here something like this just a lighter blue, didn't really add black. And I'm just going along the top. If you go over some purple, that's okay. But if you're planning on touching up on the purple, perfect. Just adding some in. So it's not just white at the top, right? But it does have a lot of white up here. Um, but to help give it that random look, so it's not like you just filled it all with blue, 
just take plain white on your brush after you used up a lot of that blue and just kind of do some soft rounded motions with streaks. You'll find that it does keep it a bit lighter overall, softens up to some of the top blue and it makes it look a bit off white instead of pure white. The light here actually, cause there's just reflecting, but the light here is supposed to be more of an off white up at the top. It's not pure white. It's not just empty canvas. You can maybe add in a couple dabs over on the side. So again, this is still abstract up here. I haven't made anything fancy. I just did a couple streaks coming from the side, a couple little swooshes is what I call it, some waves. I'm not making an actual cloud. And a little bit here, took some white on my brush without even washing it off with not very much blue still left on it. And then just added in, it softened up some of your blue, gave it a bit more interest and just leave it. Try not to play around with that. And how are we doing? Are we ready to move to the next step? I'm just trying to see if we're there. It's, we're probably all at our own pace. And very shortly we can do these fun little circles. These are really fun, um, especially the raindrops too. You can do all sorts of things with that. But I wanna finish up um, any touch-ups with this cloud. So if you're having issues with it, it should dry, especially since we've been doing dry brush, it's already dry for me. Okay, and the blue at the bottom, easy to do. Let's just go back to that light blue gray. So white touch of blue. We're not trying to go too dark, right? And a little touch of black, or you can take a touch of brown. Still looks a bit blue, right? It looks a bit more blue, but also you can have it as gray as you want. I'm wiping off some of this paint. I don't want a whole ton. I think I'll add just a touch more blue. There we go. So just going right around some of this brown here. If you've been having issues with it kind of bleeding and um, mixing together, this will, when it's dry, this will take care of all of that cleanup here. So maybe I want to tidy up right here, get rid of some of this brown. Play little touches and dabs. You can also do little flicks if you're feeling like changing up some of that technique. And the purple at the top, I, that's all I want to touch up on is some purple. I think it needs to be just a little bit more like I did in the original. That's it. And I'm going to show you how to add in a bit of some greenish teal. So you can do teal or green. It's another pop of color because we haven't really added that in whatsoever. And then the circles are going to be after that. So we'll let it dry for a minute and you can change your water. I'm just using the same brush here. I'm not, I don't need to wash it off because like I said, you can build onto colors with what you have. So this is that gray blue. Let's just take some red and a touch of blue, mostly red and a touch of blue. And look at that, you're getting already a almost grayish looking purple. It's not too vibrant. Wipe off some of this paint. Make sure you're happy with the color too. And then here we go. Dragging some of that into the brown. Dry brushing a little bit because I'm not trying to add it in like I originally did. It's just a little bit of a lift. Done. Now I can wash this off.
So if you're looking to add in some minty green, we can add it in. Or if you can, if you want more on the teal side, just put a little bit more blue. But after that, like I said, we're putting in some circles. Let it dry though. You don't want to put circles on top of your wet paint. And then we will quickly start adding in all of these little rain drips and droplets. This is already dry. The beauty of dry brushing is it dries so fast. It's great. All right, minty green or turquoise. So some yellow. This is literally probably the max amount of yellow that I want to put in here. Too much, you actually have just too much of a green. Um, and then I'm going to take, I had some blue there, but I'm going to take a pea size, almost a pea size of blue, maybe a touch more until you're happy. Cause you can see just how green or not green it is. Scoop of white. That's how you get that minty green. Okay. It's so, it's kind of a bit too much on the green side for my liking. So I'm adding a touch more blue, but you can see just how little paint and how much white I needed to make that light adding a bit more blue. So you add more blue until you're happy with how blue it looks overall, or if you like it more on the green side, but I am trying to keep it still very bright. You can wash off this brush. So if I wash this off, okay, washed it off and I take a bit more white, it'll turn brighter a lot faster in a small portion of what you just mixed. And um, yeah, something like this, because it's already light here. I want to keep it in the lighter color too dark. It stands out way too much. And then it kind of looks like it's not really supposed to be there unless it's a circle, like a, a circle that we're actually putting in for color and headlights. So I wiped off my paint again, just a little bit of it on, and now I'm testing it out. It's not too obvious. So it kind of almost looks like the same color I added in before. And um, you can add more yellow if you want more green or more blue if you want more blue. And I'm just, you know, making it random in the middle between this purple and the, the cloud. Maybe I'll add in a touch more yellow. If I'm feeling a bit more of a green color today just to change it up. Just a bit of that. Not too much paint, it'll come off a bit softer. Maybe in some chunks here and there. A little bit here. And I'm gonna leave that. You can maybe just a touch more <laughs> white added in here, make it a bit brighter. So it's a bit brighter in the very center. Like there's some brightness shining through in this dark cloudy section. There we go. This is my darker purple. I've decided to put a little bit more into here. And then we will switch to our detailed brush for the circles in the middle. Change your water. Um, not necessary though, but it's something to do so that you stop playing around with your painting and um, it never dries and maybe you'll pull off paint. Or you can just watch for the last bit and whenever you're ready, you can come back and put in the all the stuff that's gonna just make it look like a rainy day. It's gonna transform. So I'm just taking all the water out of these brushes here. Hey, Vicki, nice to hear from you. Putting these to the side, switching to more of a detailed brush. 
something like this. That's actually really, really thin. It's good for outlining on your raindrops in the drips or something just a little bit more. You can see this is about a size two for some circles and bigger raindrops. Who's ready? Who's ready to start all of those lights in the background? Okay, starting with the size number two, putting the zero or your double zero, whatever it is that you've been saving on the side, um, dipping it in my water, dabbing it dry. So in terms of the circles, I mean, this is where you can also change things up. Since we already have a lot of, I wouldn't suggest too much blue, but there are a few like blue teal colors. You can see some in here and they're not very noticeable. The, the ones that are noticeable are more of the orangey yellow ones and some of the kind of soft rose pink. So let's get, let's start with my orange yellowy ones. I started with that and then I put some pink over top. You don't need to go heavy on the pink. Actually, it's kind of nice to see a little bit of it uh, more transparent some of the color behind it because it gives it that element that it's a light and then you can see through it too in some parts. So let's take some white here. Um, a little dip of yellow. Yellow, too much yellow actually looks a little bit wrong. It just looks unnatural. So this will keep it bright yellow. You can see it's super bright, it almost looks white. And then a little dot of red, too much red turns peach. And if you're not going for peach, you got to just add more yellow to it. If it's turning peach, save it for maybe a different circle, but add a bit more yellow to counter the way that it looks. More yellow and red can turn a bit too orange, but if you like it, keep that. It's kind of nice. I'm kind of just, I added a touch more yellow and it's got a little bit of a deeper golden color. So let's start with this. This is good. Again, uh, I'm not a lot of paint on my brush right now. So let's start with more of the bigger circle. It's kind of right here. Make a circle and just fill it in. Take a bit more white here. I kind of want the edge to be pretty defined. You can still see a little bit of the background, but not a whole ton. So that's good with me. I actually went bigger here, just <laughs> obviously, as you can see. Um, it's nice to see the different colors. If you want to go smaller, go a bit smaller than me. On this 12 by 16, this is actually the size of, I would say, a toonie, which is Canadian currency. So maybe it doesn't help some of you. And then let's take this color again. Let's go a little bit higher, but a bit smaller. Another circle. So again, I'm going bigger here. You can decide if you want to go as big as I did or keep it smaller and more modest over on the other one. And this is roughly the size of a dime. 
Okay, so I'm changing up my color now. Changing up your color. You can still build onto this more white and now a little extra dot of red. So it's kind of like, you know what? Yeah, this is good. You can use this or you can just do pink without mixing these together. See how it's softer rose pink? It's not too pink pink. It has a element of yellow toning it down. That's what I used. So I'm gonna use that. Then overlap, so just doing a small circle, slightly overlapping the other one. And this one right around here up top. Then from here, uh, you can add tiny little circles just in the background, mostly in the center, right? So that's where a lot of the lights would be because the road is here, not much happening over here. So you can use this color, switch up your color, use white, whatever, whatever you wanna do, more orange, you can change it up, maybe more red if you're thinking actually red, like people are breaking and, um, that can be added in. So I'm just adding a couple little circles here. Maybe I'll go back to some of my lighter yellow. There's another one right around here. That could be pink too. Wiping off a bit more of this paint and you can get just a slight little small bits of some circles like you can't really tell if they're circles or not. Just very softly off to the side. That's it. Then I will be switching to more of a teal or blue. I'm gonna do teal because I already have blue here. I'm gonna do a bit of a teal. Before I do my teal, I'm going to do one little touch up on my gold and yellow. More yellow, some red. Oh, that's a bit, it's actually a little bit too orange. A bit more yellow. Some white. You can do a second coat. Especially if you want to have it stand out a little bit more. So I still have that minty teal green. You can just use that. You can change it a bit, maybe add a bit more blue if you want it a bit darker. I kind of went a bit more blue just to give it a deeper bluish teal color. So it's different, it's not the exact same. Just a touch more of it. You can counter it with some white if it's still too dark for your liking. So this is not going to stand out a whole ton but it will just slightly enough so that you can see it. And it's it's a bit still blend in the background. See all that? It's just softer. Maybe a little bit here. Add as much as you want. You can overlap other ones. It's actually nice when you overlap because it it would naturally. Pretty cool. Oh, shoot, some people throw it over. I mean, it is very abstract. It does seem a bit weird. Um, I would say stick to the end. Even if you start over, maybe start over, stick to the end, see how it looks. It's probably, uh, it has more context when you get to the rain droplets and the light. So when we put the rain droplets, it does look like a very abstract, out of focus, like you're looking through a window. And whenever you're happy with the amount that you have, leave it, we're going to put in our raindrops. 
And there's a cool little trick that I added to that's going to help assist with making it look watery and stuff. Remember, little tip, if you want to go a bit more above and beyond here, you can add more orange and actual red for brake lights if you want to stand out a lot more. That would look awesome too. Okay, so for my raindrops here, what I'm going to do is go to my detailed, my more detailed, the smaller one. So this tiny one here. You can still use the same one if you have a size two and the smallest you have. I'm just going to take black at this point, a little touch of water. You can use water with your paint now and not don't don't dry brush this actually. So dipping it in water and just mixing around my black, getting it a little bit more watery, but not so that it's dripping too much. All right, here we go. Let's start with the drippy lines coming down, wherever that may be. Maybe you want to add more. So for here, I mean, don't think of it, you know, when you're looking out the window, we all know this. You, you want it to go so straight and then it just does a weird thing. That's what we're thinking right now. That's what we're doing. So we're going to just lightly touch and then just kind of let your inconsistent hand just do its thing. If you have a very, uh, if your hand is not very straight, this is perfect. Or you're going to have to force it. You're going to have to do some squiggly lines sometimes. And it's not supposed to be too perfect. Sometimes it can be a little bit thicker in parts than others, but that's okay. Um, sometimes it's just going to be like, eh, I'm going to go over here. Ooh, I'm going to go back. And then it just does that kind of thing. Water, more paint. You're going to run out of paint. It happens, but it's the price you pay for a thin brush to just keep it pretty thin overall. Um, so there we go. I have some weird little dips and curves. Go to the very top, so I'm just going to complete it up here and at the bottom so it doesn't look like it just cut off. Now let's do a second line. So a couple inches, you know, like right off. It's just kind of stopping wherever you want it to. I mean, wherever. Right here. More water and paint. Overall, it's pretty soft. It's not too angular, right? We're not doing really sharp lines or edges, just wobbly, like it's trying to be going down straight, but it just doesn't work out. Just there. Just doing whatever it feels like doing. All right, so that has to dry just for a little bit and I'm going to put another one just on the side. Um, you can see there's a smaller one. So it's like a raindrop just decided to pour down. We all know those raindrops where it's like, it's a big droplet and it decides to just drip down. So it's gonna start somewhere around here. So I'm gonna just do a little, ooh, here we go. Let's take more black. Let's actually make our droplets. So we have, you can actually make a rain droplet. Just outline one. Sometimes it's gonna be a bit bigger. You just have to go for it. They're gonna be smaller. They're going to be tiny little circles. They don't have to have that little pointy top and round bottom like a raindrop. They can change. So take your time doing this. Make a little circle, tiny little circles. A couple of them together. That's the whole beauty of randomness. It's not like you perfectly placed each one. Um, maybe a couple here.
and they don't have to be perfectly outlined. So they can have little gaps. It adds to the whole look of the shadow and highlight of the water droplet. Um, just some gray in it and some white for some highlight. We'll get there. Don't forget, some are coming from the top, so there's only about a fourth or a third of it sticking out, sometimes more. You see this one. You can also see they're not perfect circles for some of them either. And hopefully this part is super fun and easy. Right now they're just little black circles or rain droplets. Just remember to change it up sometimes. Tiny little ones, bigger ones, like it's about to drip down. That's why I did more of a raindrop, like they're about to drip and fall. And how are we doing, guys? So right around this section, not a whole ton covering up this awesome part, but yes, surround some of it. Um, if you happen to cover one up, just go with it. It's supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be just working around it. And maybe it just happens not to be covering all this up. But yes, I put some just around the area as it naturally would. All right, so I'm just doing a couple little tiny circles here. Don't forget about the tiny ones. They can be so tiny that you can, it's just a black dot almost. That's okay. Maybe just like something super tiny. But I do have something, a little technique to help me just get it there with um, the splatter of, if it is a splatter, with some little tiny dots of white. You can see little tiny dots. Um, it's going to help with a little bit of the tiny white droplets if you want to add it in. Just 
Okay. So let's start on the tiny little droplets before we work on filling in some of our raindrops. I have switched back, where is it? The more, the detail brush is a little bit bigger. Here it is. So the size two, dipping that in my water and I'm watering down my white. So just a pea size of your white, just keep dipping in the water, water it down. It's gonna be very watery, which is exactly what we want. So it's like it's dripping. And then flick. You're gonna run out of paint pretty fast because it's a small brush. Just add a little bit more, flick. There we go. More water, more white. A little bit there. And just know when to stop, I think. All right, so that's gonna be, I think this is good enough for me. It's not too much, and it's just enough to kind of go with the rest of the painting uh, with some of the white splatter of some rain bits, droplets. And we will finish up filling these in. If you happen to fill in your rain droplets and you cover some of the black, easy fix, put some more black around it, but it doesn't have to be a perfect outline. In fact, you can see some of them are not, like right here. It's only some black on the very right side and it's just some gray on the opposite side. So don't make it too perfect. It kind of gives it a cartoon look when you try to make it a perfect black outline on every single one. Not saying it's going to, but um, just let some of the white and the gray cover some of the black. Unless it completely covered it, you can always add some more back in and um, different, uh, the, the different thickness of black can stay, which is nice because it gives everything a bit of a different element and more shadow on some than others. So the first thing I wanna start with is actually putting in these ones here. Right now they're just black. So I'm going to take white to the side and put in a touch of black. So it's not perfectly white. It actually has a light gray look. So a touch of black. You can see it's a bit lighter gray now. So use your white and your lighter gray for all of it. So this is what I'm starting with. Some water. And then just lightly, I'm using the size two, but you can switch right to your previous brush. It doesn't have to be perfectly outlined. That's the beauty of also the reflection from the water. Um, you can cover some of the black if it's a bit too thick, right? So you can see there's some gaps. It just makes it look like the light's hitting this a little bit differently. And just make sure it's a bit smoother. You don't want rough edges. Will it be softer, more rounded? You can always take a step back, look at your painting, see how it's going and looking.
Remember, this is light gray, kind of almost looks white. So you can decide if you want to cover it more black. Sometimes having it inconsistent actually gives it more of a realistic look. So there's a little bit less black here, a little bit more there. It's nice. Okay. Now I'm going to do this one. So still putting it on my very left side. Sticking with the highlight is on the left side of the black. Finish up with white after I do the gray. So just focus on this. Keep with the gray. Put in gray into the light gray into your rain droplets. Not trying to keep it perfect, like I was saying. Some of it's going to cover some of the black. For example, like right here, maybe I'll just cover the side of the black just to show you that the outline is no longer perfect. It has more of a shadow on one side and it's highlighted sticking out more on the other side. Does it have to be perfectly filled in? No, it doesn't. And you can leave it so that there's very little black outlined around here, maybe it's very soft, just very little paint and it gives it a softer look and you can still see a little bit of the background behind it. So hopefully these are starting to look like raindrops to you, especially these ones here. using a pretty, just a little bit of paint, especially in the darker areas. I don't need to go too heavy. Because it will stick out either way.
Okay, it's hard to keep track. Like, which ones did you not do? Uh, I have these the tiny little ones here. Okay. I'm going to be adding in some little dots of white now. And highlighting with white. Let's go to the super small brush. Taking just plain white now. Still using some water with the brush. I'm going to highlight little bits. So I'm going to highlight maybe just a little bit on this drip here and there. So it's like the light is hitting a bit more on certain spots than others. Maybe more on the ones that are kind of bending outwards a little more. Same with over here. Putting a bit more of a droplet at the top, which is optional. Kind of, it looks good without it too. water and some white and now I'm going to focus on highlighting some of my droplets so let's go with the big one I'm just going to highlight more of the bottom make it still rounded just kind of swoop it along the bottom it's like you're adding a white reflection dot in a way let's go a bit closer Swooping it at the bottom, or you can do a bit on the sides. It doesn't have to be in the exact same spot. You get into the smaller circles, obviously they're more of a dot than anything else.
And some of them can have a little bit more white than others because it gives it more of a shine to some, more of a highlight, and some of them are a bit more just grayish and toned down. You can see the white really changes the way it looks. Light little touches into the small little circles. So as we get to the last little touches, uh, thanks for joining me. If you want to show your results on our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham Region on Facebook, you can um, you can show it into the event if you want to post there or any of our calendar posts. People like to show and post there too. Lots of events coming up. So you can also just... Um, you can be reminded, you can see what we're doing next. And maybe you will paint along with us on Zoom. We have Zoom classes too. Artistpalettedurham.com is our website. So light little dots, I think, into these little ones. Yeah. Right here. And final touches, I would say, is just black. You can clean up some edges. Sometimes it's just there's certain spots that um, you need to clean up you don't really like. Let me just put a little bit more black in. or a little bit more of a outline on some of your circles. Keep some of, don't do all of them, just keep some of them lighter. Take advantage of what's already there. So I already see some more on the side. I'll just scoop that one up. Okay, I'm going to stop playing around with it. So you can admire from a distance the abstract work you've just created. And you can put a little bit more splatter like I was showing you before. Okay. Just put a little bit more gray in, especially into the middle ones. If you have bigger droplets, you can put a little bit more gray to give it that white and some gray shadow with the black outline. And that should be pretty much it. You can sign your painting at the bottom, your initials, put the year. And you've created some abstract art, rain droplets. Hopefully this was fun. Maybe out of your comfort zone, maybe you learn something different, painted something different than what you normally would. I like this painting. I think it's just, 
You can make it your own, do different things with it. And maybe you'll paint along with me again. So happy painting. Show your results on our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham Region. We love seeing results there and other people can see interpretations of our artwork. Thank you guys.